Welcome back for chapter 38. Bluebeard, we could use some help here, Jack said, as he, Philip, and May backed away from the wolf. One of the guards had Jack's sword on the other side of the room, which was the perfect place for it to be doing a whole lot of good. Goblins, here, Martine said, pushing Megan behind him. But the Wolf King was a hero. Some of those stories aren't as up to date as we'd like, Jack said. He betrayed Snow White for the Wicked Queen. Preposterous, Ford said. The children will say anything to avoid going home, your majesty, the Wolf King said with a knowing shake of his head. I appreciate your assistance in the matter. Ford, do not do this, Martine said. There seems to be more happening here than we know. Goblins are the queen's creatures. You've left me no choice, Brother Ford said. Whatever he's done, the Wolf King is, on our, is our only chance against the Sea King's armies. He snapped his fingers and his guards advanced on them. Meritopopia, you should come with me quickly. I don't think you'll want to be here in a moment. Too late, Martine said, as he bent down, picked up a wooden seat painted to look like gold, then threw it as hard as he could right at the wolf. Time to run, lads, Bluebeard shouted, grabbing Megan by the waist and plowing right through the wolf king's two goblin guards. Philip and May scrambled to follow, the pirate monkey hanging tightly to Megan May's neck as she ran. But Jack leapt backward instead, then ducked beneath two guards' hands and threw a shoulder into the guard holding his sword. The guard fell over as, to, as Jack grabbed his weapon, then turned to find half the guards and a very annoyed wolf king staring at him. I'll get him, the older man Barnsworth said, then clumsily grabbed for Jack. The man almost comically missed, tripping over another golden chair to fall at Jack's feet. Jack gave him an odd look, which Barnsworth returned with a wink. The window, he whispered. It's a short drop, and you'll ca catch up to Martine just outside. Care to try your luck against me again, Jack? The wolf growled, a wide smile of anticipation crossing his face. Nah, Jack said, then leapt backwards straight out the window behind him. At least that had been the plan. Instead, his shoulder clipped the side of the window, and a huge wave of pain crashed over him as he fell, surprising a blackbird sitting on the windowsill. Down he went, watching the bird fly away and wishing he could do the same thing instead of hold, heading straight down toward whatever might be below. Which turned out to be a large pirate captain. Children be so plentiful they be fallen from the skies now, Bluebeard roared, grabbing Jack by the shirt before he hit the ground. Stay with the group next time. The group, with Megan still under Bluebeard's arm, was currently running for what looked to be a drawbridge leading out into the forest. Wrong way, Jack shouted and yanked down Bluebeard's arm to spin the pirate around. We need to head for the ocean. The others just stopped and stared at him. Correct me if I be wrong, little man, Bluebeard said, but ye be wishing to live, I, and ye do know that the fish king will gut ye like a trout if he gets a hold of ye. Basically, Bluebeard's calling you stupid, May translated helpfully. We're not going back to the ocean. We are if we want Megan to be able to sing again, Jack pointed out. We need to get her back into the ocean. She'll do her thing, and then we'll be off to the fairy homeland before the Sea King's armies even get here. Before they could argue, Jack ran the group pa back past the host of formerly dressed royalty, all who leapt out of the way indignantly. Just past the nobles were the remains of a large open courtyard, once beautifully decorated, now slightly put off by an enormous pirate ship sticking halfway into it. There, Jack shouted, running over to the ship, we'll climb down from here and... He stopped abruptly, his mouth dropping open and words refusing to come. What's the problem, May said absently, struggling to free herself from the monkey's grip. Then she noticed what, she, what he saw and fell backward, landing on her behind with a loud groan, her eyes still wide with shock. Covering the shore in every direction, mermen with human legs marched out of the ocean in tight formations, each wielding an ugly-looking triton and a weighted net. They extended as far as Jack could see up and down the shore, and there seemed to be no end in sight. And the mermen's soldiers weren't the worst part. As Jack watched, his mouth hanging open, enormous sharks emerged from the water, their mouths filled with teeth, mermen riding on their backs. And those sharks walked on legs, just like the mermen did. Somehow the Sea King had not only given legs to his mermen, but to all the creatures of the sea. Here and there, eel, eels slithered up the beach on centipede-like legs. Huge schools of piranha ran around the sand in a frenzy, and no, it couldn't be real. No, no fish was that large. Its reddish-orange body completely covered in mermen, the 40-foot-long monster's eight long tentacles walked out of the ocean and up the beach like the world's largest spider. Its beak squawked something ang angrily, and then a moment later, 
a second, and then a third spider-like fish followed it out. Those are giant squid, May said quietly, standing back up next to Jack. They're, they're huge. They're attacking with the entire ocean, Jack said, not able to believe his eyes. Below them, the castle gates opened, and battalions of goblins, trolls, and ogres filed out in formation, spreading out to protect the castle. There was going to be a war here, and it stood between them and the water. We can't, we can't do this, May said. We have to go back. She can dunk her head into a pond or something. Too late, growled a voice from behind them. They turned to find the Wolf King and a much larger group of goblin soldiers behind them, along with a host of uncomfortable-looking castle guards. Give up now, and I'll see to it that all three of you make it to the Queen unharmed, the wolf said. If you fight, I will make sure it hurts. Jack looked to Philip, who glanced back and nodded. Then to May, who, despite her wide eyes, also nodded. Okay, Jack said. Well, that's it, then. And with that, he grabbed Megan's hand and pulled her over the edge of the courtyard, down into the oncoming invasion. I'll see you guys later. Bye.